here in Mobile, Alabama, Joe Kane is the man that revived Mardi Gras to what it is still today, and is often referred to as the father of Mardi Gras. Today, Mardi Gras in Mobile, Alabama, known as one of the world's oldest and biggest street carnivals, is a 27-day celebration. There are exclusive societies with nightly parades through the streets of downtown, with the members of the societies masked, riding on floats, and tossing throats to the crowd. The throws are often plastic beads, plastic cups, or small toys, stuffed animals, and doubloon coins. Many local and out-of-town bands also participate. There are formal balls, and some of them being masked, with elegant costumes. Mardi Gras began in Mobile, Alabama in 1703, ending during the time of the Civil War. In an article from the Press Register on February 10th, 1966, Julian Rafer says, No man in the whole sweep of Mobile's history ever took, took a more creative interest in Mardi Gras than Joe Kane. In 1868, a Confederate soldier, Joe Kane, returned home from the Civil War. Who decided that he wanted to take it upon himself to, to get things going and try to boost the morale after, Marta, after the loss of the Civil War. Because again, the people were pretty sad by the whole thing. They were being occupied by the federal troops, or the, or the blue coats, as you will. So they were pretty sad by the whole thing. So he took it upon himself that he wanted to reinvigorate and get people back in the right mindset for Mardi Gras. So as a joke on the Union troops, Kane dressed as a fictional Chickasaw chieftain Indian in a plaid skirt and a feather headdress. He called this character Chief Slackabamarinico. He knew the Chickasaw Indians were never defeated along with six other friends, also dressed in exaggerated Indian costumes, calling themselves the Lost Cause Minstrels. They rode in a decorative charcoal wagon through the streets of downtown Mobile. It is said they were yelling at, to the Union troops, you'll never defeat us again, just as the Chickasaws were never defeated. And the South may have been defeated in war, but we are not crushed or conquered. In Craig Roberts' new book, Mardi Gras Mobile, he has a chapter on Joe Kane and discusses the times. The next year, Chief Slackabamarinico and his friends appeared again on Mardi Gras Fat Tuesday. Old Slack wore a tall plum hat, a swallowtail coat, with big brass buttons and red knee boots with spurs. He carried a big bass drum, Written on it was Lost Cause Minstrels. In the third year appearance of the chief, the Lost Cause Minstrels dressed as monkeys. One newspaper stated, Notwithstanding the rain yesterday, Mardi Gras was celebrated with great spirit. Earlier in the evening, much curiosity and merriment was caused by the appearance of the Lost Cause Minstrel Band. The minstrels were gotten up as monkeys and mounted upon a dilapidated wagon, and discoursed wild, and we must say, discoursed music. Joe Kane played Chief Slacka Bamarinico until 1879. In 1967, Julian Rayford established Joe Kane Day by leading the procession of a jazz funeral and down Government Street to the Church Street Graveyard and at his side was his beloved dog, Rosie. Mr. Rayford arranged to have Joe Kane and his wife brought from their first resting place in Bayou Battery, Alabama, to be reburied at the Church Street Cemetery. This was said to be the first passing of the feathers. The feathers were passed in 1970, to J.B. Foster. He led the procession for 16 years. This led to many Joe Kane related societies to be started. In 1974, one of the most famous societies, Kane's Merry Widows, began.
fourth old slack is Wayne Dean Sr., who has held this title for 30 years and is still holding it today. A Mobile County police officer states the crowd was somewhere around 100,000 on Joe Kane Day 2015. About 300 Mobile County police officers, with the help of the Sheriff's Office, State Troopers' Office, and even some out-of-town law enforcement agencies, were on duty that day. He said most of the arrests made were for public intoxications. There were many fights and cars being towed that day. Um, it was our busy, busiest day of Mardi Gras that we've had so far. Of all the two and a half weeks of Mardi Gras, we stayed slammed from the moment we opened up at 7 a.m. to that night when we closed at 9. I mean, it was just constant. And it helped a lot, too, because a bunch of my friends also work down here. And, you know, we spread the word. And we each bar and restaurant down here, we look out for each other. And I also had a band that played in the alleyway over there. So that brought in a lot of attention. But when we stayed so busy all day, it was the busiest day of Mardi Gras we've had. Um... Joe Kane Day is great though, it brings out most of Mobile, it brings out, it is Mobile, it's the people's parade, it's the people's day, it's the one claim to fame that Mobile has that no other place in the entire world has, it's Joe Kane Day, nobody else has that and that's awesome, it brings out the people.